Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're talking about how the Mercedes G-Wagon, we are in the all new G550, is capable of going up a 100% slope. And first thing first, if you're wondering what's up with the weird camera angle, it's because of this really steeply raked windshield, so I'm able to put it in this awkward position and hopefully you can still see me. Uh, but it's an awesome feature of the G-Wagon that it has this really flat, unaerodynamic, but amazing visibility windshield. Besides the point, how does it go up a 100% grade? And so I think the first thing to address here is that a 100% grade does not mean you're going straight up. It actually means you're going at a 45 degree angle. So grade, percent grade is rise over run. So if it's the same height over the same distance, that gives you a 45 degree angle. Okay, so how is it capable, still a very impressive feat, to go up a 45 degree angle? And part of what's interesting is what happens at 45 degrees. So if a car is just sitting there on flat ground and it's trying to accelerate forward, the maximum force that it's able to accelerate forward with, based on the tire's grip, is a function of the tire's frictional coefficient and the normal force pressing down on that vehicle, so the, the weight of the car. That gives you about 1G. Your cars are able to accelerate from a grip standpoint at about 1G. The tires have about 1G of grip, a frictional coefficient of 1. Well, what if you're trying to go straight up? Well, if you're trying to go straight up, your maximum force that you can accelerate upwards with is equal to that coefficient of friction times the normal force. Well, your normal force is straight down. You have nothing to grip. So your force that you can accelerate upwards with is zero. So what happens at 45 degrees? Well, then we're perfectly between those two scenarios, dead flat and dead straight up. So the force that you're able to accelerate happens to be the exact force that's pulling you backwards. So you're in this stalemate uh, when you're at a 45 degree angle where you can't go forwards and if you let go of the brake, you're gonna start flying backwards. So that's the interesting thing about a 45 degree angle. Now, how do we know if the G-Wagon can actually go up that 45 degree angle? Well, it needs to be able to accelerate. It needs to have a coefficient of grip greater than one. So it needs to be able to accelerate greater than one G and we can figure that out with a fun little test. Okay, so in order to go up that 45 degree angle, we need to have at least one G of grip, or a frictional coefficient of the tires of one. So how do we know whether or not we have that? Well, we're gonna do a little test and do a little math in order to figure it out. So I'm gonna be using a V-Box here, which we can measure braking distance. So if I can brake and measure the distance and find out if my acceleration is greater than one, then I know I have more than one G of grip within these tires. So we're gonna be stopping from 60 miles per hour and with the equation distance equals one half velocity squared over nobody cares, we can figure out that 120 feet is our magic number here. So if we stop from 60 miles per hour in less than 120 feet, then we have more than one G of grip with the tires. We can do the same thing with 30 miles per hour, so I'm gonna do that as well. If we can stop in 30 feet or less, from 30 miles per hour, then we have one G of grip. If we're over 30 feet or if we're over 120 feet from 60 miles per hour, then we don't have one G of grip. And as a result, we would not be able to climb a 45 degree angle. So that's what we're gonna test right now. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so the results are in. We stopped from 60 miles per hour in 130 feet. So not quite 1G braking, but from 30 to zero, it did it in 32.5 feet. So very close, and we had a very slight elevation uh, decline. We were going downhill about one meter from 60 miles per hour down to zero. So a little bit of a decline, which would give us a bit of a disadvantage. And the fact that it stopped from 30 to zero in 32.5 feet is very close to 30 feet. So that indicates to me that it's close to that 1G threshold. And the V-Box does say that the maximum deceleration G-Force experienced was negative 1.029. Now, unfortunately, all of this has been irrelevant because I learned that the tires on this car right now are not the original tires that come with it. So it comes with Pirelli Scorpion Zero All Seasons, and right now it has some Falcon All Terrains on it uh, as a result of a off-roading event that this thing is about to participate in. So those off-road tires likely have less on-road grip uh, than the All Seasons that come stock with it, which probably puts it over that little edge, you know, 32.5 is what we're at. We wanted 30, and we got 32.5, uh, so very close 
close in braking. I believe it is possible, which I'm impressed with, by the way, because I assume something this big wouldn't be able to stop so quickly, so heavy, 5,500 pounds, and yet it was able to do it. Uh, and I think with the original tires, and unfortunately it just doesn't have them on it, uh, I do believe it would actually be able to brake in greater than one G of deceleration and thus provide us what we need in order to climb a 45 degree incline from a grip standpoint. Okay, so with the assumption that it has enough grip and you know, it's got a transfer case that can put it in a low range and tons of torque. So as far as having the torque to do it, that's not gonna be an issue. This thing has plenty of power, twin turbo V8, and you can multiply that through a crazy amount of gearing in order to accelerate up it. So it's got the power to do it, it has the grip to do it, but will it tip over? So that's the final question. And so the way that you can determine whether or not a vehicle is going to tip over at a certain angle is to look where its center of gravity is. So if you draw 45 degree angle and you stick the G-Wagon on it and it's trying to climb up it, if you take the center of gravity and draw a line straight down from it, if that line going straight down falls outside of the vehicle's wheelbase, in other words, behind that rear wheel, then the thing's just gonna tip over backwards. And so it actually won't do this in the G-Wagon. It's got that big heavy engine up front and the center of gravity is low enough. So your center of gravity is far enough forward and low enough down that it won't actually tip backwards at a 45 degree angle. Now, if you were sideways on that 45 degree angle, it would in fact roll over. In fact, the angle at which you can drive without the thing tipping sideways is 35 degrees, which still for an SUV is pretty impressive. So that is pretty cool. Now, if the vehicle were purely two wheel drive, it wouldn't be able to do it because you need all of the grip available. So there's a little bit of weight on those front tires uh, and you need that grip. So because it has uh, the four wheel drive and you're able to lock all three differentials, you can send grip literally wherever it needs to go, that final element of you can crawl up it because you have all of the grip available to use to propel you forward versus if you had a two wheel drive vehicle and you were on that 45 degree angle, unless all of the weight was on those two rear wheels, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it because even that small amount of weight on the front wheels would mean that you don't have enough grip. Your frictional coefficient total for the car combining between the rear and the front because you can only accelerate with the rear wouldn't be enough to actually get you up it. So the G wagon is actually super cool and as much crap as it gets for being you know the the mall crawler or the you know the Beverly Hills wagon uh, that's out there that you know it's it's a rich people's SUV toy uh, that's never going to go off-road and honestly like that's fine with me I don't think you should really off-road these things even though they're extraordinarily capable simply because of how expensive they are if you want to go break stuff outside then just get yourself in a Wrangler and you know things can break and it's not as expensive to replace but as far as SUV goes I absolutely love love the G-Wagon and there are very few uh, SUVs out there period that ever get me excited like this is my favorite this is as good as an SUV driving experience gets and not from like a driver's perspective of oh this is fun to go around a track it's going to be a terrible vehicle if you're going to try to track it uh, but it's just a joy to drive and there's there's kind of four things I think that make it really great first of all is the capability and I know I said you know you shouldn't go off-road in this thing because it's too expensive and I still believe that but if you were to the amount of capability that this thing has is incredible. You've got 9.5 inches of ground clearance. You've got a lockable front, rear, and center differential, which means you can send torque to absolutely any wheel. If just one tire is on the ground and the other three are in the air, you can send all of the torque to that one tire on the ground. It has really great approach, departure, breakover angles. It can ford through quite a bit of water. It now has an independent double wishbone front suspension. And ultimately, you know, you combine all that, the ground clearance, the really great four wheel drive system, and you put a nice set of tires on it and you're gonna go wherever you need to go. It's gonna be quite capable in pretty much any scenario. The second reason I absolutely love this thing is its presence. So you look at it and you're like, yeah, it's a box, but it's still a very iconic box and there's nothing else really really out there quite like it. Perhaps the Suzuki Jimny is like the baby uh, cheap version of this. And I love the Suzuki Jim Jimny. It's one of few cars where I look at it and I'm like, yes, I want that thing. And if they sold it in America, I would absolutely buy one uh, because it's just a, a cheap G-Wagon essentially. You know, none of the luxury, but all of the, the kind of off-road cool 2,500 pound vehicle. I mean, this literally weighs more than double a Suzuki Jimny, which is insane. Uh, but the presence this, this thing has is insane insane. I mean, you, you look at it and it's just like, this thing was built to find and James Bond. Like that's its destination and its journey and its mission in life is to find him 
James Bond. This thing is evil. It has presence on the road. You look at it and it's like, yeah, it's a box, but it's an evil box and it's here to destroy you. The sound that the locks make when you lock it, I mean, you're in a bank vault and the sound of the doors when you close them, they kept that the same. So much about this feels like the last generation G-Wagon and I love that about it. You know, they didn't change the things that didn't need to be changed and that, that makes it such a cool experience. I mean, you get in modern cars today and you close the door and it's kind of this just flimsy clink and it closes shut. This you actually have to try. You need effort to close these doors and it's a very satisfactory thud when you do actually close it. The third thing I love about this SUV is the driving position and the visibility. So sticking this you know, vertical windshield uh, is not ideal for filming and it's not ideal for aerodynamics whatsoever. And I've also found out it's not ideal for bugs. Bugs smash into this thing constantly. I've gotten out of the car and had to clean it a couple times to get rid of the bugs that just go splat right on the windshield because it's just a flat surface flying through the air everything in its path. Again, evil. Uh, but the visibility is amazing. You know exactly where all four corners of the car are when you're looking around here. You've got excellent visibility. The seating position, you're really close to the windshield. You see everything. And I love that. So many SUVs today were willing to sacrifice visibility in the name of aerodynamics and in the name of style. And in this case, uh, yeah, the aerodynamics suck. Uh, but styling wise, this thing looks awesome and you still have great visibility. And finally, what brings it all together and just sells this package is the engine. Mercedes twin turbo 4 liter V8 is just exceptional. It has very little lag. This thing weighs 5,500 pounds and goes 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds with a 416 horsepower, 450 pound feet of torque V8 engine. The engine sounds awesome. You've got the side exit exhausts. You get to listen to it when you want to and you get to hear this incredible engine and it barks at you and spits out flames. Uh, but but then when you, you know, put it in comfort mode, it backs off completely, it goes to a really high gear, you hear nothing at all. So it can be both worlds. It can be that evil rugged thing uh, where you hear everything or it can go into its quiet mode and you can just sit back and relax. Now, so I don't seem like I'm just endlessly gushing about how amazing this thing is. Here's one thing about it that sucks. Pretty much if you, if you look at this SUV from a driving dynamic standpoint, it's awful like the steering response is horrible the thing's kind of a boat and it just kind of slowly wiggles around the road and there's nothing you know responsive about it at all now they have increased the steering response from the previous generation but i mean you can move the wheel so much and so little happens as far as which direction you're going uh, so the the response of the steering from a driving standpoint it's bad and yet nothing about that bothers me when i'm driving this thing i don't feel like i need it like yeah the entire car rolls like 45 degree angle every time you make a turn and that seems a absurd like why would a car ever do that and yet when you're in this like with the sound with the visibility with the entire experience all packaged together you don't really mind so I think I just said that I was going to give something negative about it and then manage to find a way to turn it into a positive thing and that's just what this vehicle does to me I absolutely love the Mercedes G-Class it is such such a cool vehicle so that's what I have to say about it I think it's great that it can go up an incline plenty of other vehicles can probably do the same you just need the grip and the tires to do it uh, in the center of gravity and that kind of stuff uh, but it's cool nonetheless to think about and do a little math on thank you all so much for watching if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave those below i am going to put this back into sport mode get into manual shifting mode and have a little fun here uh, on a mountain road and a g-wagon because that makes sense right wah, wah.